Any health advice given, whether general, diet, physical or spiritual, is general only and must be verified by your doctor. If you need medical advice, please consult a doctor. The following program is a repeat. Please do not message or call in. Any announcements made on the program may now not be applicable. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the latest edition of the Health and Fitness Show. I am your host for today, Suleiman Rafiq, and we are broadcasting live from the studios of Inspire FM today on the 20th of February 2020, reaching listeners in Luton and surrounding areas on 105.1 FM. As always, you can join us via the Inspire FM website. And if you prefer to watch as well as listen, you can view us via Facebook. All you have to do is go to the Inspire FM Facebook page and click on our live link. As well as our expert guests in the studio today, I'm delighted to say I have a very special assistant with me and he'd just like to say hello. Hello everybody, uh, my, name is Ibra- my name is Ibrahim Suleiman. Uh, hello all listeners, my name is Ibrahim Suleiman. Uh, I just want to pass it on to Mr. Suleiman Rafiq. Bye bye. That's great, thank you very much for that Ibrahim. And it's as well as Ibrahim, it's also great to have the interaction from our listeners and you can do that by text or WhatsApp. All you have to do is text or WhatsApp on 0777 948 That number again, 0777 948 Or you can call the studio on 01582 uh, 481822. So in regards to today's show, every parent wants their child to stay safe, but with many potential risks in the home to think about, accidents can happen easily and when we least expect them. Unintentional injuries are one of the main causes of premature death and illness for children in England. Every year in England, 60 children under the age of five die from injuries in and around the home, which is one in 12 of all deaths of children aged one to four. There are also over 400,000 visits to A&E departments and 40,000 emergency hospital admissions in England each year because of accidents at home among under fives. Fortunately, there is a great deal that can be done to reduce unintentional injuries amongst young children. And to give us some practical advice on how we can avoid injuries in the home, I'm delighted to say that we're joined by two expert guests. So if I could ask them to firstly introduce themselves. Hello. Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us um, on the show to talk to your listeners. We are really um, excited to be here and passionate to share some information about keeping children safe. My name is Elaine Ainsworth and I am the Child Injury Prevention Officer for Luton and I coordinate a scheme called Safe at Home, which I'm going to tell you more about. I have around 18 years experience of child safety, having worked with Ofsted and Childminders previously and in my current role um, within the Safe at Home scheme, which I've been in now for around 10 years. So that's where my background. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Hi listeners, I'm Christine Rogers, the Flying Start Implementation Manager. I have been on the show a few times and I'm delighted to be here tonight to talk about, um, alongside Elaine, accidents and how we keep children safe in the home. Flying Start is Luton's um, five antenatal to five years um, strategy and we look at how we make the services for families with under fives 
accessible for families and how we can make sure that all the things we do we're giving the messages that you really need to make you feel um, as in informed as you can as parents fantastic so we couldn't have two better people in the studio with us to discuss today's topic um, <laughs> and you will be here throughout the hour so if Thank anyone you. would like to get in touch they can do that by text or whatsapp on 0779481822 um, so as well as your organisation, my understanding is there are other organisations involved. And can you just tell us what partner organisations are involved in Luton specifically? Certainly. Well, the Safe at Home scheme has been in existence in Luton for 10 years. We've just celebrated our 10th birthday. Whoop, we're very excited <laughs> about that. We're very fortunate in Luton that actually we have the Safe at Home scheme and we are unique because I believe we are the only local authority in, the, in England that still has a Safe at Home scheme, which originated um, in 2010 from um, an intervention from the government, but also working with the Royal Society of Prevention for Accidents. Mm. So it's very unique to us in Luton and we hold on to that and we're very proud of that but we don't do it in isolation we do work very closely with the Luton and Bedfordshire fire um, service we also work very closely with the children's centres we work very closely with all of the partner agencies um, in Luton for referrals and we look at how we can work with other agencies to make sure that we are keeping children and families in Luton as safe as we can fantastic fantastic and in addition to that my um, understanding is that you are members of the Child Injury Task Force in Luton. Um, can you tell us a bit, little bit more about that specifically? Yes, this is a multi-agency um, network of agencies and together we're looking at how we can make families um, um, have the have the knowledge perhaps about where is the best place to go when they've got a when their child is ill or whether their child has got an, an, an injury so at the moment Elaine has been working very closely with um, the CCG and a, vari and a variety of other agencies to look at developing some leaflets which are self-care leaflets so the idea is that actually it gives parents a really good understanding of where to go if it's a minor injury or if you need to seek medical advice or in the worst case and it is usually only in the worst case that you would be taking your child along to the emergency department mm. we know for families that actually when you go to the emergency department you are likely to have a long wait and so actually it's far better to be able to have the understanding of where you can go locally perhaps to get that information so as it saves you a trip to um, the accident and emergency department Great, great. And I've, th that, that would be, I guess, really helpful because particularly with children, you tend to panic, don't you? Because you, you just, do. you know, and so to, if you have that information in your mind, then that resource would be would be really helpful for parents yes. because there are various different options. There, yes, on. there really mm. are. And I think one of the, the key messages really, we will be promoting through the Safe at Home scheme and through the children's centres and through Flying Start where you can access this information and these self-care leaflets. But we're also very keen to be promoting alongside that the use of going to pharmacies as a first port of call if you've got colds and coughs rather than having to take yourself off mm. to, the, to the GP and also the use of 111 as a really good mechanism for getting that that professional advice that advises you as a parent where you should be taking your child. Sure. So there are three different leaflets. Yes, is that right? we've got one on cuts and bruises, sprains, and head injuries, and they are colour coded as well. So it it graduates in how where you go for that um, for that advice. Sure, and but they're not available just at the moment. No, they're, they're not... a work in process at yeah. the moment, and as soon as they Two are weeks. available. It's about two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Not okay. long, not yeah. long. Expense <laughs> is mounting. Yeah. We will be issuing um, information out on social media and we will fantastic. be making them available for you. Great, great, fantastic. And so for anyone that follows us on Facebook, we can try and um, connect the link with the with the recording of this as well. Um, Excellent. And so just um, in regards to the, 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 the purpose of the leaflet, it was around basic information um, depending on the symptoms what else are you hoping that would come from from developing this we're looking that it will be it will empower parents to have that information and be a bit more um, 
sort of encourage to self-care their children at mm. home rather than taking them to hospital um, to give them the confidence to make you know those choices if they can't manage them at home then perhaps go to the pharmacy but the like Chris was saying the last the last resort you know for the most serious cases would be taking them to hospital mm. um, so hopefully it will reduce the the number of children that go to hospital with a minor injury obviously we want them to, to be taken to hospital if it's something major but for the minor things that could be um, helped at home then that's what the the leaflets will will give you some guidance Good, great and I think so for us um, on the health and fitness show normally we cover quite medicalized topics mm-hmm. diabetes and then these kind of topics um, but I've kind of been from afar noticing there's been quite a lot of social media um, information available around making sure your children are safe at home and you know as a parent myself Mm -hmm. I've got a little uh, soon to be two year old as well as uh, (laughs) as well as Ibrahim one of the Uh, most vulnerable ages oh really (laughs) interesting interesting well they're on the move aren't they and they're into everything yeah yeah they have no sense of danger no and they want to touch everything (laughs) (laughs) okay that's interesting Mm -hmm. and maybe we can come on to that in terms of you know what specific age ranges and you know um what you need to kind of be careful of as well okay. um i mean i would like to introduce our listeners hopefully there will be uh, lots of listeners out there who either have children themselves or you know have nieces or nephews for example um so if you do have any questions why not get in touch and you can do that by text or whatsapp on 0779 4818 two two um so as i mentioned i came across safe at home through social media can you tell us a little bit more about your social media presence i know that yes we we have um facebook twitter instagram we have a website um we know sort of the way to reach people now families is through social media Mm. so we put lots of stuff out on social media um, top tips for keeping children safe how to apply to safe at home um, things like product recalls Mm. and all things like that so it's just an easy way of parents keeping in touch Mm, with us i think one of the ones that i found quite interesting was the product recall yeah because i noticed there was there's been a few um that i just just kind of noticed and often you know um, you don't necessarily get that information from anywhere else you know because companies they don't necessarily there's not much in it for them I guess as a company to say you know we've recalled X, Y and Z product so hopefully we'll be coming on in a little while to talk about uh, talk about more of that in in a little bit more more detail but it's just fantastic fantastic work that you're doing in regards to empowering people with all these different bits of information yes and if they follow us on social media Mm. they won't miss anything yes Um, and and we often say you don't know what you don't know until Mm. someone tells you that so it's very easy easy to miss out on things and even through social media i learn about things Mm. you know and i'm i'm still learning you know i'm not an expert in the field as Mm. such i've been doing the job for 18 years but you know often i hear something that takes me by surprise and i'm quite passionate about sharing that information Mm. with parents because if that saves a child from an injury then that's worth sharing Mm, and i also urge parents like you found it useful yourself for Mm. you to share those Mm. posts as well because it's spreading the word yeah absolutely and i hadn't thought of that that's that's, that's a good point as well so just in regards to as i say um is this is a new topic for us to be looking at which is which is exciting but can i just i mean do you know do do we have more injuries in in the home in luton compared to other areas well prior to the safe at home scheme going back sort of 10 years ago um injuries in luton child injuries in luton were higher than the national average which was what raised concerns so that's why the the scheme nationally was brought around for the the areas with the highest accidents to try and reduce those accidents to children because most accidents are actually preventable um, by just changing something you know that you're doing at home or by moving something Um, but now since the safe at home scheme injuries have have dropped but we've still got a long way to go 
Um, you know, there are still children having injuries mm. um, and it is often the things that we don't think about um, that children are having those injuries through. Children from the most deprived areas um, do seem to be having more hospital attendances than children from less deprived areas. Um, several, lots of different reasons for that, but often it could be that the child has fallen down the stairs because mm. they haven't got a safety gate on the stairs mm. and they haven't got the money to go and buy a safety gate. Had they have had a gate on the stairs, the child wouldn't have fallen down. Mm. Um, so those types of things have a big impact as to whether parents can afford to buy safety equipment, things mm. like cupboard locks, um, children can access medication, chemicals and stuff like that. Mm. So the idea is that, that we can support families to help reduce those, those accidents so we do um, offer a lot of support to low-income families. All families, but also low-income families, are a priority. Sure. So there's a universal offer for all there is families a uni- listening. We encourage yeah. all families um, to, to learn about Safe at Home and to be aware of what we can offer. Um, and there are additional benefits for low-income families as well. Great. So just before we go on to the specific ones, because you mentioned there about... Um, the stair gates, the baby gates, yes. is that quite a common... Yeah, we recommend that safety gates are fitted to stop access to the stairs. So mm. it may be that you put one on the living room door to stop the child from having access into right. the hallway, into the by the front door, up the stairs. Mm. We would also recommend that a gate is fitted um, usually to a child's bedroom door to stop the access to any other bedrooms upstairs Mm -hmm. and to stop access to the top of the stairs so that children can't fall down the stairs okay um so that that will reduce the number of of fall injuries Mm -hmm. falls is our number one accident Mm. nationally falls is the number one accident and it follows the same in Luton it is the number one accident and children under 24 months Mm. you know if there's if there's nothing to stop them from getting to stairs they will climb and they will fall down because Mm. they have no no sense of danger no absolutely absolutely and I think that's as we said in the introduction today's show is all about uh, empowering parents so that they've got the information empowering families so they've got the information and aware of the support that's available we're very fortunate in Luton that we do have this scheme running Um, so we're not looking to scare anyone but at the same time I was this isn't an area that I've ever done any work or or been involved in previously and just when I was researching the topic I was quite astounded by um, the the, the, number of hospital admissions for example um, that come as a result of in most cases, preventable uh, accidents in yes. the home as well. Yes. So just coming on, I mean, I'm conscious that we will be we will be coming to a break. But just before mm. that, I'm just uh, like to touch on understanding. Um, so if I've understood it correctly, you're 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 coordinator for Luton specifically, yep. um, and you were mentioning there that there is support available for Luton families. So can you just yes. break that down for us, please, Elaine? Yes, I mean the main thing that the Safe at Home scheme does is we off- offer a free home safety check to all families in Luton so it's a universal offer um, to families that have got children under the age of five and we go out to the home we offer them a home safety check one of our friendly advisors will go into the home and uh, they will ring the parent and make an appointment they'll go into the home they'll have a, a walk around they'll have a nice friendly chat with the parent and ask questions about where dangerous things are kept things like medication chemicals and we will give a top tips and advice about what they can do in their home to make it safer and then the parent is left with an advisory checklist and any actions so that they can pick up on what they would like to do Mm. one of our top tips is to be one step ahead of the child we do like to go in um when, when the family's got a baby before the baby is on the move so that we can give all that advice before the baby is actually mobile right. because that's that's a key time that's to, the prime time. to um, prevent those accidents. Mm. Um, and the parents, 97% of our 
parents in a recent survey commented they felt their home was much safer since mm. they've had a safer home. And they were quite surprised about the small tips that right. we gave them. It isn't just the big tips, mm. you know, that they probably were already aware they needed a safety gate. But it was some of the little things that mm. we pointed out that they didn't actually realise were unsafe um, and risk areas in their home. And all homes do have risks. You know, mm. they all homes have hazards and we can't avoid that. But it's how we can make it safer mm. for children. Absolutely. And just seeing some of the comments on Facebook as well is um, uh, people were so grateful, weren't they, yes. that you'd visited yeah. them? Yeah. And like you say, some of the things that... Some of the... I mean, the feedback we get mm. is really good, mm. isn't it? Really it? Is. I mean, parents, mm. absolutely. They don't realise how much they needed the safe at home check until they've had it yeah. again it's going back to unless somebody actually you know talks to you or shows you or tells you you don't realize that is is quite as risky as what it is and accidents don't have to happen they can you know they are preventable and they can be prevented there's nothing worse than seeing a parent whose child has had an accident you know they're very upset um they feel very guilty they yeah. can blame themselves Absolutely. and think oh i wish i'd you know i wish i'd mm. thought about that sooner mm. so we're there to, to just you know help out and yeah give that advice at an early stage Fantastic. and if I've, it, it, one of the big benefits for low-income families yep. um, is if they are claiming universal credit or any other benefits they will also be entitled to free um, child safety equipment which is loaned to them and when they've finished with it they can give it back to us and this is where we work in partnership with the fire service because they will actually um, go to the family home and install that equipment for the family okay. so it's fitted free of charge and the fire service will also offer a free fire home fire safety check so they if they need smoke alarms they'll also get smoke alarms carbon monoxide detectors um, so that's really beneficial mm. for them and that's something that, that often parents will comment that they couldn't have afforded to buy that equipment mm. and they wouldn't have been able to fit it themselves yeah so yeah. it's it's really really good absolutely because like you said there's the expense element but then there's also the fitting element yes, isn't there for yes, a lot of people yes um, um you know we support a lot of um single parents and, mm. and they don't have that ability to be able to fit something securely yeah um so we want to be able to help people and absolutely. you know we've listened to what their needs are mm. and we hope that we can meet their needs so Fantastic. they get a free home safety check and yep. low-income families um, that are claiming benefits will be entitled to free child safety equipment and that's things like safety gates cupboard locks window restrictors fire guard um, non-slip bath mats um, a hair straightener pouch there's lots of mm. different it, we have a look to see what the home needs and we advise what needs fit in yeah but if a parent doesn't qualify if they're not um, in receipt of benefits they can still um, have the hope free home safety check yeah and if they wish to they can purchase equipment from us oh. at a discounted rate okay um so there is still that option it was something we've been asked mm. for wasn't it over the years so Fantastic. we recently introduced that mm. so that families can still access equipment if they need it absolutely so just to be clear then because i know that we're now broadcasting further than ever yes. before uh yeah. we, I, I was driving to cambridge the other day and I, I was getting it pretty much all of the way um but this uh the free home safety check are for Luton household. They are for Luton. You um, have to be in LU1, LU1, LU2. to LU4. Yeah, LU1, yep. LU2, LU3 and LU4. I did have a family from Bournemouth phone me up last wow. week to see if we yeah. could fit for them. Yeah, um, but unfortunately, they were out of yeah, the area. yeah. But it is for Luton households. Fantastic. And it's if you're pregnant or you have a child between the ages of zero to five. Yes. That you're yes. then eligible. And yes. everyone is eligible for a free home safety check. 
Yes, yes. Fantastic. If they haven't had one before, sometimes we get families um, that come back to us. It is a free home safety check for that household. It's not per child. So it's if you've had one before, you probably won't need one again. Yeah. But if you've um, not had one, then you should get in touch. Fantastic. We would like every family in Luton to access it because mm. that would really help and that would also help to reduce the number of children that go to A&E because parents really do take on board what we are advising great and so for all parents listening um how can how can they practically apply for for this then um, parents can they can go into their local children's centre and ask in their children's centre they can apply online through our website which we're going to give the details for um, they can go on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and find all our details on there so there's lots of ways of getting hold of us or they can call us, they can call us at the Flying Start office which is a Luton number Luton 548356 or they can ask at the baby clinic they can ask their health visitor so there's lots and lots of different ways that they can get hold of us Mm. but they need to know about safe at home and they need to have had a a home safety check sure absolutely i'm conscious we are we are fast approaching our advert break we have had a couple of questions in uh one of which was we spoke about um falls for children um what sort of um, disabilities can falls cause to children under 24 months? I mean, how serious could a fall be, I think is the question. It, yeah, some, sometimes they're minor, like what we call kiss it better. You know, they, they've fallen and just bumped if they've fallen off of a step. But if they fall down the stairs mm. or out of a window that's a serious injury sure um so they're the types of things that they they could sustain serious head injuries neck injuries Mm. that we really want to be avoiding absolutely absolutely i think one of the things that's really key is the getting down to your child's eye level because Mm. actually if you do that as a parent you can see what exciting things there are for them to climb on so Mm. that's one of the messages as well really sure 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 yourself in your child's shoes yeah absolutely so we've got that and lots more uh questions to come Please do stay with us and we'll be back after this short commercial break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the latest edition of the Health and Fitness Show. I'm Suleiman Rafiq, your host for today, and we are broadcasting live from the studios of Inspire FM on Thursday, the 20th of February 2020, reaching listeners in Luton and surrounding areas on 105.1 FM. Today's topic is on how to keep children safe at home. Some listeners may feel it is an unusual topic for us to cover on the Health and Fitness Show, but did you know every year in England, 60 children under the age of five die from injuries in and around the home, which is one in 12 of all deaths of children aged one to four. There are also over 400,000 visits to A&E departments and 40,000 emergency hospital admissions in England each year because of accidents at home among under fives. Fortunately, there is a great deal that can be done to reduce unintentional injuries among young children and we're joined by two expert guests in this area to explain that in more detail. I'll just ask you to reintroduce yourselves. Yes, my name's Elaine Ainsworth and I'm the Child Injury Prevention Officer for Luton. And I'm Christine Rogers and I'm the Flying Start Implementation Manager. That's great. Thank you very much for giving up your evening to be here with us. It's a pleasure. And uh, missing the UEFA uh, (laughs) Europa League. I was saying to a friend of mine, I was saying to a friend of mine, you can listen. The match is on. But I said, no, no, you can listen as well as watch the match at the same time. Um, So, as we were saying just before the break, there, there is uh, a lot of support and advice that is available to empower our parents here in Luton. And we're very, very fortunate to have your service. 
service uh, that is operating here. You were mentioning there that for all families, there's a universal offer for support. Could you just briefly recap on that? Yeah, um, we offer um, a free home safety check to all families that live in Luton, um, LU1 to LU4. Um, If they've got a child under the age of five or they are pregnant, they are able to access this service and we will go out to their home and give them a free home safety check. They can apply for that service either by contacting Flying Start or by going on our social media network or they can ask their health visitor or they can go into their local children's centre and ask about a safe at home check. Fantastic. And then there's some specific support available for low-income families? Yes, um, we like to help the low-income families. Um, if they can't, if they haven't got any child safety equipment in the home, we can also offer a free loan scheme where we can uh, provide safety gates, cupboard locks, fire guards, window restrictors and things like that that will help to keep their children safe. And that is installed by the fire service so they don't have to worry about installation and when they've finished with the the equipment they can just contact us and we will go and collect it from them we're also um sort of quite helpful that if they move house and they want that equipment moved to another house they can just let us know and we will arrange for it to be removed and refitted okay. in their new home mm. so um it but is it's a very unique service i mm. um, very good that we've got it in luton and uh, lots of parents give us very good feedback mm. Mm. Um, from the visits they find it really helpful we do ask that if you've got family or friends that have got young children then to pass this information on to them because they might not have heard about safe at home so really sharing what we've got in Luton is one of our key key um, messages great um one of the questions we've had on from um a listener thank you thank you for everyone for their questions is um it's th- this is the first time they've heard about the scheme and um it, they don't see it advertised at gp surgeries and things like that is that something that you're looking to we were on the screens in the right. gp surgery it is something we are just going we're looking we've been talking about it mm. today haven't we okay. about <laughs> there, we've, we've heard mm. comments how people yeah. haven't heard about yeah. it yeah. Um, so we are looking to relook at where everything is advertised. It should be on screens in GP surgeries, yeah. and we're getting new posters printed and getting them out everywhere. But Great. we are all over social media. You are. Yeah. Um, we have a website. Um, fl- it's on the Flying Start website as well. So we're hopeful that people can find us if they know where to look. <laughs> Great, absolutely fantastic. And you're here on Inspire FM. Yes, there you go. just so, promoting uh, our service, promoting your service and helping your listeners. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we're very grateful for that. And uh, yeah, and as you said, I think one of the things is is that you, for us to cascade that information, yes. to share that information, you know. Yeah, even I with mean, you could be a, an auntie, an uncle, yeah. a grandparent and a friend that just happens to know someone who's pregnant or got a young child so just ask them do you know about safe at home if they don't know about it mm-hmm. then you know they can google it and find us and yeah. we can go out and help them great and then just uh just to just because i'm conscious people have taken the time to to message in mm-hmm. which is great Lovely. so just quickly is what's the so from applying what's the time scale for then it really process. does vary what area they live in. Yep. We have um, around 30 safety advisors that work across wow. Luton. Um, we are very busy. Um, we have a lot of families that contact us. Mm. So it depends what area they live in as to how quickly we would get out to them. But we aim to, to be out as soon as possible, but usually within 30 days. Great, great, so fantastic. That's our turnaround time. Fantastic. And the most important thing, as you said, is to get in contact. And if, Yes, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The the actual um, safe at home check is free yep. and if you are eligible we will tell you um, when you make your application whether you would be entitled to child safety equip- equipment as well fantastic and just the last one here is around um, so this is assalamu alaikum is it helpful for parents to have peds first aid training is there any training available to have uh, pediatric first yes aid it trauma. is active luton actually offer a really good um course that parents can sign up to so if they go they can contact active luton on their training um 
schedule and they will see there is paediatric first aid training fantastic yeah. is that for staff uh, or is, that, is that mainly for professionals or it's is that for parents for, oh, it's for yes, parents, for oh, parents. Okay, fantastic. yes so, yeah um, yeah we when we do the home safety check it is one of the things that we ask is do parents have a first aid kit because right. if their child has a minor accident yep. they can deal with it mm. at home but then the next question is have they ever attended a first aid course and we will leave them details of where to go and and where to access it sometimes in children's centers occasionally they do run first aid courses in a children's center but they do get booked up Mm. very quickly Um, but active Luton are the place to go to fantastic so yeah highly recommend that highly recommend that's great listeners thank you very much for your questions Uh, if you do have any more you can text or whatsapp us on 07779 481822 so your your services don't stop there you also um, have have some uh, parent awareness sessions can you tell us more about that yes we we run several different um, styles of parent awareness sessions we either go into children's centres we go into nurseries um, we do um, child safety road shows and things like that to raise awareness but one of our popular uh, sessions is keeping babies safe and we uh, invite pregnant parents to come along to a free session at the Luton Irish Forum um, it's, we hold that about once a month the dates and venues are all on our Facebook page and our social media media page and on the Fly and Start website and parents can learn about um, how to keep their baby safe. Um, we also talk about nursery equipment, what products are recommended, what products are not recommended and one thing to teach parents is not everything that's sold in the shops is safe or recommended for children Um, there's a lot of problems with product compliancy at the moment Um, so we are um, looking Mm. very closely at that so we help parents to make safer choices for their babies to give them the information so they can go and choose safer products for their babies and we also talk about a new program called tubes of life um, which is about how their babies breathe and about making sure that their baby's airway, um, their chin is not on their chest um, because babies can't breathe as much as they would do if they was laid flat. For example, if they're in a car seat and it's a new baby, Mm. their chin will go down on their chest so they don't get as much oxygen to their brain. So we do some um, little demonstrations and show them how they can position their baby um, for the the best outcomes for their baby mm, absolutely and can you tell us more about tubes of life then how did that yeah, kind tubes of-, of life is a new public mm. health initiative um that we've put together in luton it's about how baby breathes about um three key messages to help baby develop healthily um help their brain develop the first message is smoke free so encouraging um parent not to mother not to smoke but also after baby's born that the baby um is in a smoke-free home so if there is secondhand smoke in the home that's very dangerous for babies Mm. Um, the second key message is breastfed breastfed babies have a lower risk of a sudden infant death syndrome because of the breast milk is formulated different to the formula milk and that actually reduces sudden infant death syndrome and also the third the third key message is to lay baby in their own cot flat in their own cot but to keep their cot clear no cot bumpers no pillows duvets cuddly toys to have a clear cot Mm. those three things combined help to reduce the risk of sudden infant death syndrome and also help to improve baby's brain development Mm. so it's a very very good um program yeah and it's something that we educate um pregnant parents with we, we invite pregnant parents parents as early as possible in their pregnancy because that's when they will get the most benefit from the session but they can come at any time but obviously if they come too near the end mm. they're usually just about to have their baby yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah i think one of the things we find also is that it's really helpful to be educating grandparents okay, yeah. and the wider family as well because I know from when I 
was expecting and from when I had my children, actually the messages have changed dramatically. Yes. So right. actually what we try to do all the time mm. is be informed with the latest evidence base yep. and so we can constantly be updating things for parents to make sure that they're getting what's the most appropriate research-based information it can now. be very confusing for parents it can. can't it it because really can there's so much clever marketing and cons- mm. you know consumer products and parents just go with if they go to a baby show they'll buy whatever is there because they think that's the in in thing sure um, so we just try to raise awareness yeah and it's just been uh, it kind of touches on the point you made about um having the baby um sleeping in the room um so this is about um co-sleeping um so sharing sharing the same bed rather than having the child in the in a separate cot what's the Um, position on that there has been a lot of controversy over co-sleeping and there really we always advise that a parent speaks to their midwife or their health visitor who is going to see them in the home and see where the baby is sleeping if a parent is going to is choosing to co-sleep then they should have a professional to have a look to see and to ask the relevant questions because there are risks involved so it's about eliminating what risks are there the safest place for a baby to sleep is going to be in their own cot next to the parent's bed in the same room as the parent but some parents either choose to co-sleep or they co-sleep unintentionally where they may have been feeding baby and they've fallen asleep feeding baby in the bed so it's about how you make that bed safe or whether there's any other risk factors is there anybody else in the bed Hmm. that may roll on the baby Hmm. can the baby roll all out of the bed um, okay. are there any pillows are there any duvets nearby so all those sorts of things need to be looked at sure before we can definitely say mm. it is safe or it isn't sure. safe sure so it's best to get advice to consult yes with your um, and again that is something we talk about at the keeping your baby safe workshop because right. we know people do want to make those choices yep. but it's important that they they are given the correct advice how to make those safer choices absolutely absolutely i'm conscious time is time yep. is running away <laughs> with us and um, hopefully that has answered the listener's <laughs> question if it hasn't then then please do message message back um so just in regards to as you said you've got a phenomenal um social media presence can you yeah. just recap on on how people can follow you to keep in touch yes we've got um facebook so it comes under safe at home cip the cip stands for child injury prevention right okay so it's facebook twitter and instagram Fantastic. And you've got a website as well? We have. We are on um, www.safeathomecip.org.uk. And we're also on the Flying Start website, which is flyingstartluton.com. Great. Perfect. And um, like you said, you've got a lot of experience in this area. I know it's an area you're extremely passionate about. And I your am, passion, I, I think, it. comes through the <laughs> airwaves, which is uh, a delight to <laughs> a delight to have, uh, you know, someone who's really uh, doing so much great work in this area in Luton. And we, we thank you for that. And so just in regards to from your experience, getting down to some of the nitty gritty practical <laughs> elements for parents that might be listening. So given your experience in this topic, can you touch on some of the common helpful tips Um, Yes, one of the biggest tips we're giving out at the moment is to raise awareness about button cell batteries, the small little flat thin batteries Uh that you can find in electronic gadgets, children's toys, Mm -hmm. um, lots of general household items have these little button cell batteries in them. little children pick batteries up and they pop them in their mouth and they're very easy to swallow Mm. people often think they're going to choke on them they're not likely to choke they're more likely to swallow them and if the battery gets um, lodged somewhere in the child's airway or the child's stomach it will burn a hole internally inside the child the child um, will bleed internally and could bleed to death within hours so it's absolutely paramount that these button cell batteries are kept 
out of reach, well out of reach of mm. children. But if you do suspect that your child has swallowed a small button cell battery, if you notice something's missing out of a, a toy or a gadget and you don't know where it is, the child may have put it in their mouth and swallowed it. Our advice is to take them straight to A&E. Don't wait for them to get sick or ill Mm. take them straight to a and e and tell them that you suspect your child has swallowed a battery we always suggest they take the electronic item with them so that the doctor can see what's what what size battery it would be um, so that they know a little bit more what they are looking for. So that's one of our top tips is is with button cell batteries. Um, Hot drink scalds is another common um, accident that happens to children of all ages but we do see a lot of under fives with hot drink scald Mm. um, and they are serious burns. If it's burnt a child from a hot drink it's serious. So our top tip is never hold a baby when you're drinking a hot drink so always have somebody else hold the child when you've got hot drink in your hand and keeping hot drinks out of reach of children so if you've got a coffee table in the middle of the room try and put your hot drink somewhere else apart from the coffee table and another one of our top tips is at the moment is around e-cigarettes the liquid refills in e-cigarettes um, are extremely toxic and can be fatal if a child um, gets hold of them and there's three ways that they can that can poison a child they can either ingest it so they drink it or if they spill it on their skin it's actually absorbed through the skin or if they smell it or put it near their nose they can inhale the fumes from the liquid and that can also um, get into their bloodstream so it is very dangerous so we do advise that those products Mm. are kept well out of reach of young children that's really that's really helpful listeners thank you very much for your your kind comments and um your well your kind comments so so a lot of people are enjoying the show and they're they hadn't occurred to them about very small things around the house um and so i just wanted to pass that on as Thank well you. You. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning of the show there about product recall information so that's something that you yeah so that's something i put out sort of regularly on social media um i'm in touch with lots of um other organizations like the electrical safety council and we all keep in contact and they let me know when there's anything that's been recalled we recently we We've had tumble dryers, cot mattresses, um, baby food, car seats, um, baby monitor. There's also been um, a serious product recall with a Fisher Price Rock and Play. Um, it's like a baby um, bouncing chair, but it turns into a cradle. Oh. And there have been a high number of baby deaths because of this product so fisher price have recalled this product but this is why we think it is so important that people follow us on our social media Mm. so that as soon as you know they see something they might think oh i've got that or i know someone that might be using that i do notice on social media they share it a lot with family and friends and just say have you got one of these yeah Uh as you were saying it i was trying to remember that uh, because i think we had one or have one but yeah i need to check check see i need to check it yes always always have a look just make sure yeah (laughs) when parents come along to our workshop um you know we give them this information and we often people are given secondhand baby equipment Mm. so we you know get them to check out to make sure it hasn't been recalled great so listeners you are listening to inspire fm on 105.1 fm we are live today on thursday the 20th of february 2020 uh we only unfortunately have a few minutes left of today's show um so i'm just going to come on to any upcoming campaigns you might be running Yes, we've got quite a few um, things coming up. Locally, we've got um, a road safety campaign. It's about car seats and it's just um, getting some awareness out to parents that ensuring children of all ages are actually, if they're travelling in a car, that they are using an approved um, car seat to restrain their child in the car. Is it legally it is the law that children are in a car seat when travelling? Um, the other thing to raise awareness of is 
is that seat fitted correctly? Because mm. um, you may have a very good car seat, but if you fitted it incorrectly, then it's not going to keep your child safe in the event of a road traffic accident. Um, so make sure it's age appropriate um, and fitted correctly. And also something that we've learned recently is car seats actually have an expiry date. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yes, yeah, something that's often grandparents may be using in a car seat that's been handed down yeah. or a second hand mm. one that may have actually expired so it's about how old is the car seat mm. has the car seat been involved in any accidents because if so it should be discarded because right. it isn't safe for use yeah. so that's what our, our um car seat campaign is about yeah, and then in march we've got um the lullaby trust has got safe sleep week in mm. march so on my social media there will be lots of information going out every day about babies under 12 months about how to make sure they're sleeping safely mm. and that they're not at risk in their cot we talk about overheating um about suffocation and lots of things like that sure and then um, nationally as well, um, there we are. Yeah, that's nationally. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Just as you mentioned car seats uh, expiring, a few messages kind of popped up there. Can you just clarify what you mean by that? It depends it's not on expiry the... date on the... It's not like a jam. It's expiry date on the actual it's product. It's actually on the car seat. It's actually written yeah, on the product. On right, the, okay. Now, car seats that are made now, yeah. the more recent ones, yeah, yeah. have a sticker on the side as right. to when that car seat will okay. expire. Wow. But car seats that are, have been made sort of years ago, they don't have that that expiry date on them, but mm. the materials in the car seat will mm. have degraded yeah. and it might not be safe. Mm. So that's what we are raising yeah. awareness. And if the seat's been involved in an accident, then you should Yes, be... it's a definite no-no. Mm. But they can have a look at the ROSPA website because that has got some recent information that went up this week. Yep. Um, and that's um, ROSPA stands for the Royal Society of Prevention of Accidents. Mm. Um, but we will be putting some information out in March about car seats. Great. And that's where people can go to for information now. Sure. And I know we do have a lot of professionals that listen to the show. So have you got any advice? Uh, we've been focusing on parents, but specifically for professionals that work with young children. Yeah, we offer um, lots of um, support to practitioners that are working with families. We we can go in and give them bespoke training, child safety in the home training. We can do tubes of life training in so that they can share those key messages with families um so yes we can support professionals mm. as well we are, we are happy to support professionals and i think if anybody wants to contact us then please do mm. because we will look at how we can accommodate um in any way shape or form fantastic thank you so much for your time unfortunately the time has has completely got away with us we'd love to love to have you back on it's such a important area to get that discussion going often people i think are fearful of kind of discussing it but you know knowledge is power isn't it it is Um, you know and so it's great great to know around all the different preventable ways um just with our 30 seconds remaining is there any last things you want to say I think really if you haven't had a home safety check and you have an under five then please get in contact and we'd be more than happy to come and visit you and we are here to support you to make your home as safe as you can for your child. Fantastic and Elaine is there any last thoughts? Well just to second what what Chris is saying but accidents don't have to happen so we can go in and and help families we are there for you. Fantastic listeners thank you very much for joining us on the health and fitness show.